Welcome everybody. In this Python Pandas tutorial, we're going to go over pivot and pivot tables. Let's jump right in and get started. Here we have a definition for pivot. Basically, pivot reshapes your data and allows you to view it in different ways. The three main arguments that you'll use when using pivot include the index or rows, the columns, and the values. So the first thing we did is we went ahead and imported pandas. Next, we've gone ahead and created a data frame here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this data frame. Here we have some made up sales data with some items, numbers sold, and years. Now this is just one way to view your data. There are many different ways to reshape this data and view it in different ways. One of those ways is to use pivot. So here we have two examples. For our first example, to create the pivot, you want to go ahead and use your data frame name dot pivot. And then inside the round brackets, as we mentioned here, you want to go ahead and assign your categories to the index or rows, columns, and values. So in this case, we've assigned the year to the index and the item to the columns and the values are the numbers sold. So let's go ahead and copy this variable, put it over here and paste and take a look. So this was our original data set. We use the pivot. The year is the index and you can see that becomes the row labels here. The item is the columns and you can see the columns become the item categories. A through D, and the values, which are the numbers sold, are here. Now here we have a second example, but in this case, for the index, we use the item, and for the columns, we use the year. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so as we mentioned, the items are the index. You can see those are here for the row labels, and the years are the columns, 2016, 2017. So basically, these three data sets here, here, and here, it's all the same data, it's just a different way to view it and to reshape it. So it just depends on your goals and how you'd like to view that data. Next up, from time to time, you may want to put your data in different forms. Now, if you'd like to convert a data frame to CSV, you can do that. Just use your data frame name dot to CSV, go ahead and put in the path of where you'd like the file to be saved, give the file a name, and use the dot CSV extension. If you have your working directory set up, you may not need to put in this path. But in this case, we're just going to keep it real simple and easy and put everything on the desktop. So if we select this and run it, there should be a file on our desktop with the name pivot underscore df for data frame. Let's go to our desktop. And here's the file. And here's a quick preview. And you'll notice it's in the same format as our original data frame. If you'd like to convert a pivot table to Excel, you can do that. Just use your data frame name, dot to Excel, put in the path, give the file a name, and use the Excel extension. So if we run this, let's go to our desktop. Here's our file, and here's a quick preview. Okay, it can be useful to know how to do those quick conversions because from time to time you may want to take that data and open it up in another program, do some data visualization or other types of data analysis. Next up, let's go over how you can use pivot with data that you pull in from a CSV file. Okay, to pull in our CSV data, we've gone ahead and we have created a variable name. Then we use our pandas dot read CSV and inside the round brackets we put in the path of where the file is and this file is on our desktop and then we put in the name. So we're going to use that pivot underscore df short for data frame file that we created on our desktop earlier. Now a quick note let's go ahead and take a look at that file. You'll notice that we have this column here with these row labels 0 through 7 and that would be column 0. So we're going to add an additional argument to this read CSV with the name use COLS, short for use columns, and we're only going to pull in columns 1, 2, and 3. So let's go ahead and select this and run it. Let's copy this variable and take a look at the data. So here we have our data. Now just to show you real quick, if you left this out, or if you tried to pull in all the columns, 0 through 3, let's show you what that would look like. You can see that it actually pulls in those row labels, and we don't want those. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. 
and run it again. Let's clear our console. Now, to create the pivots, it's just like we showed in the earlier examples. Go ahead and use your data frame name or your variable name, pivot, and assign the categories appropriately. So in this case, we've done it just like we did it before. For the first example, year is assigned to index, item is assigned to columns, number sold is assigned to values. For the second example, we switch the index and the columns. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at all three data sets and their different shapes. So this was the original data set. Remember, this is pulled in from the CSV data, so you can do this with all kinds of different CSV data files, as long as the data is set up correctly. Here we have CSV pivot one. This is just one way to reshape the data. Let's go ahead and clear that real quick. Let's make sure we run these. Okay, now let's take a look. Original data set, CSV pivot one, one way to view the data in a different way and CSV Pivot 2, another way to view that same data in a different way. Okay, so that's how you can pull in your CSV data and use it with the pivot. Next up, let's go over pivot tables. The pivot table creates a spreadsheet style pivot table as a data frame. The arguments that you'll probably use the most often include the values, the index or rows, columns, agfunc, and margins. So we have gone ahead and created a data frame here. So let's go ahead and copy the variable name and let's take a look at it. Once again, we have some made up sales data with the stores, the years, and the revenue. For our first pivot table example, we're gonna go ahead and use pandas.pivottable. And then inside the round brackets, we have five arguments. The first argument is the data frame. So we created that here and we put that in, pivot table data frame. Next are the values. For the values, we're going to assign the revenue. For the index or the rows, we're going to assign the store. For the columns, we're going to go ahead and assign the year. And for the ag funk, we're going to use the NumPy library that we imported here, a dot, and we want to see the sum of the values. Now, if you leave this out, you may get something you don't expect. And this might actually default to a summary such as the average or the mean. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you're specific on what you want to see and how you want to see your values summarized. So let's go ahead and copy this variable, put it over here, paste, and take a look at the pivot table. So as we mentioned, the values are obviously the revenue. We use the sum function. So we have our revenue summed. We have the stores for the index. You can see those here for the row labels. And we have the years for the columns. 2016 and 2017. Now, one thing you might like to do from time to time, if you're familiar with spreadsheet pivot tables, is to do a comparison. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go to our Excel worksheet. Here we have the same data, pivot table data frame. So you can see this data here is the same as this data here. Now, let's go ahead and quickly insert a pivot table. We'll put this on our existing worksheet here. Say OK. For this example, we have the years for the columns. So to do that, let's drag our years into the columns and the store for the rows or the index. And of course, the revenue goes into the values. And you'll notice in this case, if you right click, go to summarize values by, we have the sum. And since we use the ag function here to calculate the sum, you'll notice that our values match. All of these values here in this pivot table match all of these values. Now, as we mentioned, if you leave this out, so let's go ahead and take this out and let's run this again. And now let's take a look. You can see that the values here do not match the values here. So what it looks like it's doing here currently is it's defaulting to the average or the mean. So we can check that. Let's go back to our original Excel pivot table, summarize values by, and we'll click on average. Now, if you compare these values to these values, you'll notice that they match. Okay, so let's change this back to sum. And let's go ahead and put our ag funk back in. And we'll use the sum. Let's run it, take a look again, 
and you can see the values are back to the sum. Next up, let's go over our second pivot table example. Now in this case, we have taken out the columns argument, and for the index, we've put in two categories, the year first and then the store. So let's go ahead and make sure we've run this. Let's select it and run it. Copy the variable, paste. Actually, let's clear all this. It's getting a little bit messy. Try it again. Now, as we mentioned, we took out the columns. The index is the year. The index, remember, is kind of like the row labels. And you can see we have the year, then the store here, and then the revenue values. Now, in this case, we did go ahead and put in the sum. Now, as we mentioned, you don't always need this. So when you go ahead and run your pivot table, you want to make sure that your values are shown in the way that you want them to be shown. One last note with the pivot tables with data frames is you can create those in a slightly different way. Now, notice here we use pandas.pivottable. You can also use your data frame.pivottable and create the pivot table that way. Next up, let's go over how to create pivot tables with CSV data that you pull in. Okay, so for these examples, we're going to pull in some CSV data from a file named pivot table CSV data. Let's go to our desktop. Here's our file, and here is a quick preview. Once again, we have some made up sales data with some countries, items sold, and years. So to pull that in, we use pandas.readcsv. Put in our path, the file name, the extension, and we use the use columns one, two, three. So let's go ahead and select this and run it, and let's take a look and make sure that it's pulled that data in correctly. Now we don't want to see it all, so let's use the head, which will just show us the first five rows, and that looks good so far. We have country, item sold, and year. Now remember, you can use this to pull in the columns that you want and that the first column starts at zero. We didn't want our first column with the row labels of the numbers, so we just pulled in the columns one, two, and three. So here we have three examples of some pivot tables. Okay, so for our first two examples, you'll notice that it's basically the same as we showed with the examples for the data frame. The main difference here is that we're pulling in the data from a CSV. So to create our first pivot table, we use pandas.pivottable. We used our CSV data as the first argument that we pulled in here. So you put that variable first. Then for the values, we assign the item sold. And then for the index, we assign the country. Now let's go ahead and copy this variable and take a look. So here we have our data summarized. This is just one way to view it. You'll notice in our original data set, we had our years. So this is summarizing all the years together. However, it's probably not summarizing this in the way that we want. What we probably want to see is the sum. This is probably showing us the average. Now to do another comparison with our Excel pivot table, let's go ahead and open up our Excel. Here we have our data. It's the same data that we pulled in here with our CSV file. And once again, let's insert a pivot table. Let's go ahead and put the countries for the rows and the items sold for the values. So notice that our first number here for Australia is 161,263.5. Now if we go over here to our Excel pivot table, we can see that these are currently summarized by the sum. Let's change that to the average. And now you'll notice that these values here match these values. And we don't want our average for our pandas pivot table. We want the sum. Okay, so let's go over here, and to fix that, we can use agfunc equals numpy dot sum. Select it and run it. Let's copy our variable and paste and hit return. Let's go ahead and do our comparison. And now we can see that the sum values for our Excel pivot table and our pandas pivot table match. Next up, for our second example, the first argument stays the same, so do the values. The index is the same. However, in this case, for the columns, we've added the years. So this will allow us to view our data by years. In this case, you'll notice that we did not add the ag funk. 
and that should be okay in this instance because we're not adding any of the values together. We're just viewing the values in a different way. So let's go ahead and copy this and take a look. Now this is a common way to view your data where you have some category here for your row labels and then you have the data off to the right by year and you can see different trends such as if sales or revenue are going up or down and so on. So once again, let's go ahead and do a quick comparison. Here in our Excel pivot table, all we have to do to make this pivot table look like our pandas pivot table is take the year and drag it into the columns. Okay, so from a quick glance, it looks like all of the values here in our Excel pivot table match all of the values in our pandas pivot table. But you'll notice that one thing that's in the Excel pivot table that's not in the pandas pivot table is we have our totals here and here. So let's go over one way that you could add those to your pandas pivot table. For CSV pivot table three, we've gone ahead and added our totals. Let's just go over the arguments real quick. We put in our CSV data. The values are the items sold. The index or the rows are the country. The columns are the years. You wanna go ahead and put in your agfunc equals numpy.sum. Then for the totals, put in margins equals true. If you want to name the totals, you can put in margins name equals totals. Otherwise, it will just default to all. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's clear our console. Copy this, paste, and let's take a look. So you'll notice here we have our totals on the right and the bottom. Now if we compare that to our Excel pivot table. Okay, so once again, it looks like from a quick glance, all of our totals here match all of our totals here. Now finally, another thing that you might want to do that's common is to sort your pivot table. One way to do that is by using code like this. So we've gone ahead and created a variable. We've called it sort. Then we use our CSV pivot table three so we're gonna use this variable here with the totals, and we want to sort the values by the totals in descending order, largest to smallest. So to do that, just assign false to ascending. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's put in our sort and take a look. Okay, so you'll notice over here on the far right, we have all of our countries sorted by the sales figures from largest to smallest and it's actually gone ahead and put the totals on top, which is actually kind of nice. So we'll do one last comparison with our Excel. To sort these, we'll just click here, do a right click, sort, largest to smallest. Okay, so aside from the totals here being on top, it looks like all of the countries are in the same order in the Excel pivot table and the Pandas pivot table, and all of the totals match and are in the same descending order. That's all we have for this Python Pandas tutorial. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those and we'll see you next time.